Welcome back to the Strange Bar and Grill. I'm your host, JP. Last month, I posted a video about Janiah McMichael Rogers, a 13-year-old girl from Gary, Indiana, who went missing under very suspicious circumstances. Since then, I received a flood of comments and emails, some stating that they lived in the Indiana area and they've never even heard of this case while others expressed their theories and opinions. But recently, I've been getting viewers asking about updates on this case. Now, I don't have a lot of new information on this case, but there is some information, some very important information I wanted to share for those who may not know. And for those new to this case, I'll give a quick one to two minute summary of my last video. But I recommend watching the full thing in its entirety I'll leave a link to the first video in the description below. On August 11th, 2024, 13-year-old Janiah McMichael Rogers went missing after a disagreement with her mother. The following morning, her mother found the front door ajar in Janiah's absence raised alarms. Janiah lived with her mother Jasmine and her five other siblings in an unstable home with a history of CPS involvement. Reports indicated below standard living conditions and parental alienation. A heated argument about Janiah's potential pregnancy escalated, prompting her to retreat to her room. When Jasmine allegedly checked on her later, she noticed signs of Janiah's disappearance. A private investigator that goes by the name of Kevin Collins, aka Casey Bodyguard, uncovered inconsistencies in Jasmine's account, including conflicting statements about Janiah's social media use and the state of her room. He noticed that blankets were removed from the bed as she did the laundry that day. Jasmine showed little urgency in searching for her daughter. She cared more about police warrants and didn't want to get on TV to plead for her daughter. She didn't want to go out searching for her daughter. It seemed almost like an afterthought. This case raises suspicions of foul play or possible murder, given the toxic home environment. Theories suggest Janiah may have possibly ran away, but more than likely, it looks like there's some foul play involved here. And information, a lot of it's pointing towards the mother and the girlfriend, and they may be involved in her disappearance or possibly a cover-up. Uh, due to a possible pregnancy, maybe by a family member. This information isn't confirmed yet. But all in all, it's just some real fishy stuff. And I go into way more detail on these red flags and some of this information in my first video. So make sure to watch that first. But with that, let's get into the updates. So finally, after two months, FBI is finally involved. Local authorities and the FBI executed a search warrant on October 5th at Jasmine McMichael's residence, where Janiah was reportedly last seen. The warrant was executed by the Gang Response Investigative Team, a task force located in Northwest Indiana. One thing of note here, that this task force doesn't only focus on gangs and they will help investigate many other different cases if needed. So no, this doesn't mean that the crime was necessarily somehow gang related. That's just the task force name, but they do investigate other crimes. But the question I have is, why after all this time did they execute this search warrant? What led them to the conclusion to search their home? Are they suspicious of Jasmine? the girlfriend. I just wonder if they think she didn't leave the house alive. Or could it just be standard protocol for a missing persons case? Janiah was last seen at the home, so that would be the logical starting point for an investigation. In an in initial post in August, Gary Police referred to Janiah as a missing person slash runaway, but they've recently changed their tune. They believe something more sinister has happened. I wonder what changed their minds. Gary PD stated that they reached out to the FBI and the Department of Child Services immediately, but they really didn't because it's been two months since she's been missing and the FBI is just now searching the mother's home. The real ones putting in the work have been Kevin Collins, aka Casey Bodyguard, 
and Pebbles from Missing, Lost, and Trafficked. And they're doing great work spreading the information and getting the story out there. And I don't know them personally, but I'll leave links to their pages and info in the description. So go, please go out there and support them because they do all of this work out of their own pockets just to help raise awareness and share these important stories. But getting back to Gary PD, I just find it odd that Gary PD is claiming to be on top of the case from the jump when it's been the community putting in most of the work. But again, that's just my opinion. And at the time of recording this, there has been no press conference from the mayor or the chief of police on this case. I've also been getting reports of a mysterious group of individuals riding around in a white truck in the Gary, Indiana area. They got flyers and they're asking residents for donations. They're stating that they're affiliated with Gary PD and Janiah's family, and they are not. They're just using this case to hustle up money, so do not give them money. Dahlia Guerrero, the grandmother of Janaya, has been given custody of Jasmine's other five children. The grandmother claims she has been estranged from her daughter Jasmine for a long time now. Matter of fact, Jasmine has been estranged from most of the family. She also claims she hasn't seen Janiah since April 28th on her birthday. She believes Janaya didn't run away from home because it's just not in her character. One thing that stood out to me is that she felt the need to make it a point to mention that Jasmine has been estranged from the family, from the whole family, almost deliberately distancing herself from her daughter Jasmine. And maybe I'm reading too much into things, but that just got my spider senses tingling. Because why would she say that? I think she would use more words of support of her daughter if she felt like everything was on the up and up. Again, that's just my opinion. I also find it interesting that the other five children were removed from their home and placed with the grandmother. We already saw that nasty ass house Jasmine kept in the last video I posted, but it makes me wonder if they found something else. Could there be signs of physical abuse? We already know the living conditions were horrible, but it could just be a host of many things we just don't know at this point. But that's all the new information I could find in this case, but I'm hopeful that we'll get answers soon now that the FBI has joined the investigation. The story is finally gaining some traffic in the media, so please share and like this story to activate the YouTube algorithm and get this story out there. Thank you.